Welcome to the VA Today pod and videocast with your host, Gail Alexander, a podcast about VAs for VAs and businesses looking for the right VA to help to start grow their business. Find the right VA today and visit VA Today on YouTube and ava-ni.com to find out more about VAs and what they can do for you and get in touch with the virtual assistance you need today. Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the VA Today with me, Gail Alexander, and my guest, Sarah Podelsky of Integrity Virtual Solutions, who is also the traveling technician and pet consultant. So, Hello. thank you very much for joining us, and uh, good morning to you, it's afternoon here, but <laughs> first of all, I want to start with a question going, what the heck is a traveling technician and vet tech? So, um, one of the businesses I started a couple of years ago is called the Traveling Technician. I have been a veterinary technician for the last 10 years, and throughout my experiences, animals get really stressed out coming to the vet just for a nail trim or just for an ear cleaning, things like that. So, I decided with the blessing from my boss to start a business where I could bring pet care to people's homes. So, whether it's dogs, cats, birds, pocket pets, reptiles, whatever they have I'm willing to help them at their house I can do nail trims ear cleanings anal and expressions subcute fluids give injections pretty much everything they do with the vet other than vaccines I'm allowed to do um, so it's been a real blessing that I can bring that into people's homes yeah. so along with the the medical aspect of it I'm also a consultant so if they have questions about nutrition or you know, puppy questions or kitten questions, or if they want to get a species, they don't know what would be good for their lifestyle. We can discuss the husbandry that's needed and all of that and get them on the right path. My whole goal is to make, you know, clients educated about what pets need, why they need what they need, the veterinary care of how they can go about it and, you know, prepare them for the financial cost as well and mm -hmm. minimize the amount of animals in shelters is my main goal with mm -hmm. that. So I love the way you say that um, cats and dogs and animals in general can get stressed going to the vet. Yes. Um, yes. I had taken my in-law's cat while they were on holiday with my now husband to the vet ah. to get their first, to get his first injections. And we had him in a box and I was literally holding the box, full arm stretch out, yes. gardening gloves on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The alarm out, and I still got scratched. Oh my goodness, that was oh, and I'm sure that cat didn't talk to you for days. No, no, no. But do you know it was quite a yeah, it was quite a grumpy cat for quite a lot, many years, and then he mellowed. But oh my goodness, he was not. Oh, <laughs> we think he got treated, mistreated, and then he he adopted the family. So mm -hmm. I can totally understand that, and that's a yeah. great service. So how does that lend itself to you being a VA? You're a virtual assistant business. So in the medical field, we have long days, 10 hours, 12 hours, or longer, depending if you get stuck in emergency surgery. And since I've had my child four and a half years ago, you know, long days take a toll on my lifestyle and what I want to do and when I see him. So I fell upon this program called the Free Mama Movement and did some research on it and thought, you know, the skills I have from the medical world correlate with the VA world and things that I can offer people and um, really help them hone in my skills because I have um, a lot of business management and multitasking, you know, with spreadsheets and data entry, you know, records and all of that. And, you know, monitoring anesthesia and there's a lot of other things that go along with it. So in the virtual world, I can really hone in on a specific task, get it done quickly and efficiently and really offer, um, you know, a lot of skill in that capacity and create things, you know, spreadsheets or newsletters and things like that as well. So, um, and I should mention this to the audience, this is the second time we've done this interview because I forgot to get, make sure the recording was done. So I know <laughs> the, the Free Mama movement um, that you're a member of is where you got a lot of sort of training for doing mm -hmm. your, your virtual assistance and that's yes. the one golden, isn't that right? Yes, Lauren Golden. And so 
when you got that training, was it specific to VA training or was it specific yeah. business training or was it a bit of both? It's, it's um, created to create a freelancer, basically. She tells you how to create a business from start, you know, from point A to point B and everything in between. She has templates that we can go off of and make our own, you know, work, daily worksheets of how we want our business to grow and how to get there and, you know, from tips on how to find clients, where to find clients, where to niche down and how to do that, establish our ideal clients and things like that. Yeah. So, so it's a very encompassing yeah. program. And, and as you say, it can, for any kind of business, that, that, that would be great training. So um, would you have been able to set up your virtual assistance business without any training, do you think? Or would you? I don't able? think I could have. I don't think I knew enough about this world at all before, you know, taking the program. You know, watching the free training, you know, really opened my eyes of, I have all these skills. I can probably do this. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know before the program what Zoom was what um what 90 percent of the programs are that they use before you know the introduction to that yeah so it basically just opened my eyes to you know a lot of things i didn't know beforehand yeah so the possibility and the 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 fact that you have the skills to work from home work for yourself mm -hmm. yeah um so would you um provide your skills so what exact exact services do you offer are they specific to like the veterinary world or what other sort of industry would you mm -hmm. offer your services to, out to so i would love to work for like a pet business or the veterinary world um but not a lot of them like to outsource any of that so um it's kind of me letting them know that this offer this offer is available to them you know if they need help with data entry creating welcome letters um i did that for my practice that i used to work at we made i created like a welcome letter for all of our new clients and a package for them to you know research about our clinic so you know even just you know basic spreadsheet creation or uh, managing records or even you know thank you letters welcome letters all of that stuff that you know, set you across, you know, as professional. We, yeah. I help with that. So would you, when you're trying to get a business to, or even educate a business into the uh -huh. skills that a VA has, what would you say to them saying, why, why should you hire a VA? So being from the veterinary world and aiming towards the veterinary community, when I talk to them, I already know a lot of the software that they use. I know about post-op care if people have questions or emailing questions to the vet clinic in the morning, say after surgery, so I can help you know filter those out and answer them if they needed me to, or even um, you know creating like a surgical post-op you know email for them to answer if they even wanted that, um, or if they needed to go into the doctor say you know for a recheck if something's you know, infected or whatever, they can send pictures and I can kind of say, hey, you can go there and get it taken care of. Or even if it's just handling like um, the social media pages. A lot of vet clinics don't really have time to handle social media, um, but they all want new clients. So if they would hire a VA, I can handle all that social media stuff um, and get them seen and get more clients in the door that way. Yeah, I guess because in the veterinary world, it's all about cost as well. But you want to give first class care to, to people's pets and animals that they have, yet they're really constrained with the cost or it puts customers off. So if, if veterinaries can cut down on their costs, mm -hmm. they're more likely to get clients. And I guess the VA is kind of perfect to do that rather than yeah. the full time sort of, you know, full time like right. member and staff. Even yeah, and even when people want to go to a vet, the first thing that they do is they go online. They go on social media, what vet clinics are around me, so that can kind of help with that area too. But, you know, I've also worked with a wellness coach and I'm creating her newsletter. I also like working with beach body coaches. I've worked with one of them before, just doing research on her pet food, you know, or doing research on one of the programs she wanted to start doing. So I gave her a whole lot of research for that, but she didn't have time to do that. So um, I help a lot of different businesses, but those are where I've kind of aimed towards with the veterinary community or even like the wellness coaches and that, because I want mm -hmm. them to be seen too. 
um, or like the mindset coaches and things like that, partly because I love mine and I want other people to have that, um, that vulnerability and that friendship with those people. Yeah. So you're saying like people may think that when it sounds like you're quite niche, you're not completely niche, you know, you're not limiting yourself to the veterinary right. world. And so VAs, the skills that they have are very transferable from industry to industry. It's just yeah. maybe the, the business that wants a specific task done and mm -hmm. reaching out to them or them reaching out to you, you shouldn't be put off um, versus right. um, can, can work for any manner of industry. And it's just depends mm -hmm. to those tasks. So you say like data entry, medical records, depending on the, the legalities around it, which oh, we're right. Yeah. Um, and so it's definitely something to think about that, you know, don't maybe narrow, if you're not definite about where you want to be, don't narrow right. yourself down, just keep an open mind and mm -hmm. then just maybe see how it goes. And if it goes mm -hmm. great, brilliant. Yeah. If not, you can always try and find a different client. Yeah. So you were saying like the, the, the hours that you do is like a vet tech and, and that you wanted to, basically get a better work, working life balance. And that's how you think about setting your VA business up. So yes. how do you manage your sort of your working life? Mm -hmm. now? How does it look now? So I am a big lover of the Google calendar. I have my top five priority list, which is a template I learned from the free mama of my top five priorities for the day. So I have them laid out of what I have to accomplish first. And before my husband goes to work at 1.30, I have a certain amount of time that I can spend on the computer or the days that my son goes to school three days a week. I hone in on the big things I need to get done, the phone calls I need to make in those big blocks of time. Um, so, you know, Noah has his colors. My work has a different color. Jason's work has a different color. So everything's planned out and I see where everyone's going and what's going on for that day or that weekend. Mm -hmm. um, Along with that, you know, I do my VA business in the mornings. And then, you know, after lunch, I do my traveling tech stuff if I have jobs for that day. Or if I have, you know, dog sitting, I'll go extra early in the morning before I do my computer work and get it in done in the afternoon. Um, so my son loves coming with me on all my house calls. So he comes with me. And then once we're all done, we hang out, we read our books, we have my Noah time. And, you know, it's our family time where we're walking the dogs and all that jazz. So each day is different, which I love. And, you know, I get to learn new things every single day. Yeah, and we were talking about that the other day, how the fact that you are learning something new every day and how that the VA industry lends itself well to that. So it makes it really exciting and, mm -hmm. and enjoyable for a VA to do and happy employee, no matter what business. Yeah. It means it's more productive right employer or employee for the employer mm -hmm. and we also talked about that you mentioned that you took your son with you and obviously that's when it's yeah. with an animal that you know yeah talking about how that teaches skills to your son and so mm -hmm. it like teaches them pet care teaches them yep. empathy teaches them that you know everyone needs to work hard so he sees mommy working hard Mo <laughs> i keep forgetting mommy working hard <laughs> that's okay <laughs> Mommy, it's just not natural for me. <laughs> no, it's, it's such a really good business. Um, you know, you can take your kid to school day. So, yeah. yeah. Walking him to school this morning, you know, seeing him when I pick him up from school, that's what I missed, you know, mm -hmm. when I was working seven to whenever I came home. Um, so it's been a really, it's been a gift to see him more. And, um, you know, to take him with me on my other jobs, because he's learning how to take care of animals and he knows that, you know, he loves animals too. So he's learning all about them. And um, it's just nice to pass on a passion that I have and I can see it in him too. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that VAs need to remember is if you can have a passion for your work, this really gives you that opportunity to mm -hmm. explore where you want to be and you can find that passion. And when mm -hmm. you're passionate about something, it doesn't really seem like work. Right. Exactly. And What's awesome about the VA world in general is the skills I'm learning and the software that I'm learning, I'm extrapolating that and adding it to my tech business too. I'm creating newsletters, I'm using MailChimp, I'm doing all of those things and kind of testing it out on my business to see how I like it 
so I can educate others too of this is going to work well for you. This isn't going to work well for you and learning that way too. It's been a nice experiment. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking about MailChimp there. Are there any other specific tools that you really like to use? I, I love my Google. I love my Google G Suite. I love Calendly. I love Zoom. Toggle for logging things, you know, and co for our proposals and our What's it, sorry, what was that last one you said? And co. Oh, and co. Okay. Yeah, it's a uh, software for freelancers. That's a really nice thing to have. Okay, okay. I'll have a look at that myself. <laughs> yeah, it's a n d dot c o, and it's software specifically made for freelancers that teaches them, you know, it, can, it does their invoicing, their proposals, their templates, their contracts, and all of that, that you can just kind of make your own. Brilliant. I like that. I'm going to have yeah. a look at that. That sounds probably something similar to Invoicely, that mm -hmm. use, but it sounds a bit broader. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there's... <laughs> Because I think, what was it we were talking about the other day? There's Asana and Pinterest. And Asana, Pinterest, there's Canva. There's so many different things out there. Um, Infusionsoft, too. Um, Constant Contact, all of that. So I've done little bits of research on each one. So I'm just comfortable, you know, that I feel confident that I can offer those services. Because they're all kind of similar. You have to just kind of play around with it and tinker with it. And I learn by doing. So unless I'm yeah. doing it, I'm not going to learn by just watching someone else do it and watch a video on it. Like I have to be active and do it, and then I'm like, oh, then it clicks. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, because uh, it's it's really nice for me to do this um, mm -hmm. sort of interviews with various different people because then I can find out and hear of new tools that I've never heard of. Exactly. So, like Greetable, I I hadn't heard of, but yeah, yeah. There's so many Greetable is amazing. It's fun. So hopefully, I'll remember to put these all down in the show notes <laughs> later. So make yeah. notes if you're wondering why I'm constantly looking down. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about tips and tools and, and how to use them. Mm -hmm. But when you're not sure of where to go or where to look, mm -hmm. what sort of support do you get? Or where do you go? Where do you ask those questions? It's like, mm, mm -hmm. how can I do this? Is there a tool that, that does this mm -hmm. for me? Where do you go? Like what groups, basically, I'm asking. Do you go so on? on social media, I'm a member of the Free Mama Movement where all of the other mothers in the group go to ask questions. Um, so if I have a question about a software integration with say MailChimp or something like that, or incorporating Canva into MailChimp or something like that, other than, you know, YouTube I use all the time of how to do things. But mm -hmm. if I need something in a pinch, you know, I can ask a friend in that group, hey, because a lot of the people you know, there's different niches, there's mortgage people, there's bookkeeping, there's a whole bunch of, you know, there's a lot of resources there. And one of the benefits is having that support. So if you have questions, there's other people that are doing what you're doing, but may have different, you know, there's different social media managers, there's a lot of different areas that they're working in. Um, so I just, you know, ask questions of the pros that I know in those specific areas. Or if I talk to someone who needs a VA, but I don't, really offer that service or feel comfortable, hey, I can recommend, you know, Melissa or Anne and do it that way and get them um, in the door with them. Yeah, that's something I did actually this morning myself. Somebody was looking for a, a VA that looked for a specific uh, language speaking and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, wie ist das Übernstation? And Danke schön doesn't really quite cut it for a German speaking VA. <laughs> <laughs> To brush up on all my language skills, I think I can say cheers and quite a lot. <laughs> so not useful. <laughs> Unless you're at the bar. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So not too much now when I have the kids. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, so when you um, were talking about your business, how have you promoted specifically yourself? You know, what kind of tools or what way have you done it? Networking, word of mouth, flyers, social, what, what tools have you used? So about 80% I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram more so than Twitter and LinkedIn, but I'm on LinkedIn as well. Um, talking to people in different industries. I also, about 20% of the time I'll go to networking events um, there's some local groups around here in Cleveland, Ohio, that one is called BNI. The other one is, um, it's actually called Pink Stilettos, is made for women entrepreneurs specifically. I know, it's a great it's name. It's such a class, man. <laughs> it's a great name. 
So I'll go to some of their events. Some of their events are in Avon, Ohio, which is about 45 minutes away from me. So I pick and choose if I want to go to those specific ones, depending on the drive and who's talking. Um, but B&I is right down the street. My neighbor actually is a business owner as well. So she knows a lot about my business. I know a lot about her business. So she tells people in her network or if I'm subbing for her and I'll talk about both of my businesses with her as well and, you know, go to those um, events too. Yeah. Which is a good thing to do because I know um, from having gone to sort of a training session, well, informal training sessions mm -hmm. specifically on networking. And when I started, it was like, I really don't want to go here. I don't know anyone. Yeah. And that's like one of the suggestions is take somebody with you, even if they're not going to say anything, just to have that presence. Yeah. Um, so you can move into a group to talk and introduce yourself. And once you start doing it, it's, it's, it's a lot. Of, yeah, yeah. So even if it's just... You know, everyone gets nervous. I was talking last night at my son's nursery school and I thought, yeah, do this. Nope. As soon as I stood up, I'm like, my hands are shaking and I'm talking. Yeah. <laughs> my hands are all clammy. <laughs> my yeah. my first networking event, I went with my cousin a couple of years ago because um, he's a chiropractor and he was, you know, he knew about my traveling tech business. He's like, why don't you come and talk about it? I'm like, I don't want to talk to people. But the more <laughs> I got used to that and, you know, felt his support for me, you know, I was able to talk more about that. And I talked to clients all day long in the vet world anyway. So communicating my message became easier because I was used to talking to people. So it just, it's getting easier and easier. You know, yeah. I try and tell as many people as I can and support them as well. Hey, what do you do? And da da da. So one of the networking group events that I went to, I was talking to this gentleman who was a financial advisor. And it turned out he wanted to have a discovery call with me and see what else I did outside. And he turned out to be the mayor of the neighboring town. He's like, if I know anyone who needs a VA, I'll definitely let you know. And you never know who you're talking to. So it's just a nice thing to have, you know, you never know. Just reach out to people. You never know who you might meet. You might talk to the ne the next big film star and bring mm -hmm. them to get, no, you just <laughs> never know who you're going to talk to. And right. it's just, try as hard as it is and i understand that and i have struggled with that and i'm getting you know i'm pretty okay with it now but at the start mm -hmm. it was awful so as you said you just don't know who you're going to talk to and it's not just about business it can be for referrals or just interest outside personal interest friendships even so yeah i think that's another way to look at networking is and the more networking to. events you do and the more people you talk to, they develop, the more you show up and more consistent you are, they develop that know, like, and trust with you because they see your face. So yeah. the more they see your face, the more they talk to you, the more they remember you. And that rephrase that you use, I think, is, is very prevalent in the sort of marketing world is the no like, trust. And that's exactly what we're kind of trying to do with the VA industry. It's like, First, we need we want the VA or the business world to know what the heck a virtual assistant is, right? Um, and then, like, yeah, okay, I think what they're doing is pretty cool. And then, but mm -hmm. getting to know a VA, so demystifying or mm -hmm. drawing the veil back of and showing, yeah, okay, I can trust that person specifically yeah. because they're doing the work that I need them to do. So, you're a vet, veterinarian, sort of tech or health or wellness mm -hmm. coach. Or, VA and so there's so many different areas that mm -hmm. a VA can work in so it's just about finding that right one that suits you and then take a look at it. And them. what really touched my heart the other day is I was talking to my my new client and she's a doctor and she wants me to create her newsletter she's like I had this thought and I had no time to do it and I'm like I have a she's like I have a VA now I can have Serena do it because she's awesome and that just really like warmed my heart you know that she depends on me you know it's just a great relationship that we're developing and making yeah the call i had uh the most recent call i had we were talking about the va being the backbone of some some somebody's businesses because yeah. they're busy doing something but the organization or the, the mm -hmm. stuff that's going on behind mm -hmm. really gets sort of left to the wayside and it really needs done but they don't have time to do it so yeah bring us in va we can do it right <laughs> va's are awesome <laughs> So, just if you work by yourself, you know, sometimes you need help just, you know, sending thank you cards or sending a welcome email. And that's, you know, yeah, that's what we thrive on. And that's a really good thing because I don't think a lot of people think about that kind of thing. It's such a small thing to do to send a thank you card. But the impact that has for some businesses is incredible, you know, because that business will stick in somebody's mind. And, and then they'll tell their friends. 
Exactly. So a small thing to do that obviously is going to be at the bottom of somebody's list, you know, the, the owner, mm-hmm. but for a, a task for a VA, mm-hmm. very quick and easy pretty much to do, mm-hmm. but invaluable. So um, uh, yeah, I love that. That's a, a wee tip I might put out on the Instagram and I will yes. put, uh, yeah, get your VA to do your thank you cards. Yes. For you. <laughs> with my tech business, the first thing I do with a new client after I'm done, you know, trimming their dog's nails or whatever, I send them thank you letters, every new client. Because then they'll remember, you know. Definitely. girl came to my house. She cared about my animals. So I did the same thing with the VA world, too. Yeah. Thank you for talking with me. You know, it was great speaking with you about your business. I hope to watch you grow. And that's been a really nice feedback mechanism for me, too. Yeah. And I think I've learned that from uh, somebody I know, Lisa Strutt from Ascentive in Ireland. It's all about, when it comes to networking, it's all about the follow-up. So, mm-hmm. Good shout out there, Felicia. So <laughs> yes. I think you're so right, and it's a great point and something that's easy to do. So yeah, yeah. let's thank everyone a bit more. <laughs> yes, so and gratitude goes a long way. You're right. You are right. Yeah, definitely. And it's an easy thing to do. So why not? Right. Um, so from transitioning to that obviously uh-huh. very hectic long hour schedule that you had, mm-hmm. and moving into VA, was there many challenges that you had? Many hurdles? What you know, what problems or did you come across and how did you? Basically the challenges, because I don't like change all that much. I'm a, I call myself a recovering perfectionist because I like everything a certain way. Mm-hmm. And sometimes <laughs> life throws you curveballs. So you have to just kind of adjust to it and learn it. So my biggest challenge is actually myself. You know, when I first started the business, I'm like, I don't know this. I don't know this. I don't know this. I can YouTube it. I can ask a friend. Mm-hmm. I can do this and this and this and troubleshoot it. I can do this. I can do anything as it my mind to. So my biggest challenge is getting out of my own way a lot of times and just, you know, do it. I'll figure it out. I will do it. I think uh, we talked about imposter syndrome and it's such a a huge thing that so many people go through and I had a sort of element of that with me last night and it's just like, oh, just talk to somebody about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can YouTube it. You can talk to somebody. You can get advice. and You can find a way to do it. And if you can't, it's not the end of the world, you know, right. you just say that to your client and they can find somebody else, you know, a VA is not expected to do everything. Everything, exactly. You don't have to know everything. Your website doesn't have to be perfect. Just go out there and do it. Just go yeah. out there and do the thing. It'll come natural once you start doing it. Just do it. Practice. Practice makes perfect. Exactly. <laughs> so from your challenges, your goals, where do you see um, – integrity virtual solutions going where's the next big thing or the the progression for you um so my biggest thing is replacing the income i had when i was in the veterinary world um you know trying to find three to four anchor clients that you know i add value to them they add value to my life and i get them on a monthly retainer and then we'll see where it goes i would love to you know um just grow and see where it goes you know, I don't have a big five-year plan. I have a right now plan because that's what I need. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I'm loving the work that I'm doing. So I plan on doing it for a very long time. And that's just succinct and perfect. And we like that because, as you say, you're sort of working around your son. And anyone with children knows, oh, my goodness, things can happen. <laughs> things can happen. <laughs> it's a drop of a hat. Is that tank as he woken up? Of course it's Tank, yes. The <laughs> loudest of the three is Tank, awake now. <laughs> He's happy chappy. He's had a snooze. But yes. we, didn't, we didn't get a photo of him the last call we had. He was over before. here laying down this morning. He was for like five minutes. <laughs> oh, it was funny. It was very funny. But yeah, that's, that's life. Things happen. So Right, exactly. Or Noah's been sick all week, so I've been able to hang out with him, you know, Instead of handing him off to my babysitter, I'm here now when he's sick. When he's calling for mommy, mommy's here. And the thing is with that, you're still maybe not able to do full-time work or the full, the, the full hours or the tasks you need to do. Mm-hmm. You still do some. And that's something, you know, if, you ha- if a business had a staff member, mm-hmm. it's just not, you know, it's not an issue or it's not an option. That right. person needs to go home and look after their, their kids. So mm-hmm. there's another bonus for, for businesses to hire a VA, just hammering this home. But, right, right. You know, VAs are so flexible that even when right. a situation like that is, they can do 
some work for you, or even they can find an associate or somebody they know. Right. You. So mm -hmm. it fills that gap, really. Yep. Exactly. Um, and so then, guys, lastly, we finish on just um, we're talking about networks and um, how we promote ourselves, but how. You know, from being a virtual assistant and working predominantly at home, although it's not so much an issue for you because you do go out and see people, but do you find yourself ever feeling isolated in this job, in this career? I, I talk to people all day long, whether it be other moms or my clients or their pet parents and educating them. So I value my alone time. I need it to rejuvenate myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't really... I'm independent. You know, I like my alone time. It's where I can come back to myself and um, kind of recover from talking all day. <laughs> so I kind of need that isolation, um, you know, to just kind of cool my brains out, hang out with my animals and just be quiet. Yeah, <laughs> no, I tell you something because uh, we were talking about introverts and quite a lot of VAs are high performing introverts. Doesn't mean they are socially in a, in in adept, inept. they're you know they're highly skilled and very social it's just that they need time to sit back and take it in and I did a heck of a lot of talking yesterday two of these interviews and then a yeah an interview for governorship in uh, like prior and nursery school and I was like oh my goodness I felt drained yeah but and been a VA we're able to do that we're able to take that five ten minutes away and then come back if we need to so mm -hmm. yeah it's it's, it's a yeah. something to think about but for sure um, it's um I guess it's a lifestyle and a working uh, career that really lends itself well to anyone struggling with any sort of mental issues that sounds bad that's not really what I meant but if you've any mental health issues is what yeah. I mean and with being such a relevant subject and topic mm -hmm. at the moment it's mm -hmm. just great to be able to people are still able to work because there's no they're still skilled they're still right. having, they're still um, able to do the job yeah yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. you just needed to be quiet for like five minutes and when i was working 12 14 hour days mm -hmm. i was by the time i get home i'm just like i can't talk to another single soul right now or i'm going to cry yeah. <laughs> so like, you know, like, day? Yeah, that's it takes manic so yeah, yeah. And I guess the, that's where, where the animals come in. They're quiet, but they're just there. Yeah, they're there. Relax. And I still get to see them. I still get to talk to people about it, just in a different capacity. I'm not recovering them from surgery, but I can help them with surgical questions in this capacity. I can, you know, just be their support system when the vet is, say, closed and they have a question. I'm here. You know, yeah. So that's a nice thing to have. And I think a lot of people kind of forget, you know, animals and pets are such a massive part of people's lives and families. And, you know, we have to look after them too. So to have somebody like yourself, mm -hmm. on, I won't say not completely on call, but more on call than maybe a vet, that's a yeah. valuable. I have many phone calls at 1130 at night when someone has a question about their dog or their cat or their guinea pig. And, you know, I find that very humbling that they feel like they can depend on me or if they go out of town they can call on me to watch their pet because when i go out of town or if i'm gone for the day i have a list of like this big one person or two people that i trust with my animals so if they have that trust in me i take that very seriously yeah yeah that's like i might have a what would you say a niece for a furry niece <laughs> <laughs> okay and then and, and yes uh, the, this dog is, is more like a horse so okay. There's not too many people that can look after this. Yeah. Dog. So I totally get that. Yes. So finally, I just want to say, well, thank you very much for coming on the show today and talking no me, and talking to me about a, an industry that um, there's not too many people that do what you do, but it's great to show that it's such an option and for businesses to see, yeah, VA suitable to you. So. Thank you for sort of explaining what you do and how you can do it. I think it's a real, it was, fun. It was a real bonus and it was nice to see Tank happy and awake. Yes. <laughs> and enjoy yourself. So I will say thanks again and let you get back to your work and your animals. Thank you very <laughs> much. And I hope to see you soon and see the growth of uh, uh, your business as well. Yes, yours too. We'll have a great rest of your afternoon. Okay, thanks very much.